what is up everybody it's jack and welcome back and it's been a while since i made a video let alone made one of these if at all so i don't know what i'm gonna call it i might i might just call it similar to how xcal did it like from the desk of xcal i might just do it from the desk of jack now nah, probably not maybe jack's thoughts conversations or something any ideas in the comment section would be uh would be appreciated but we're gonna be talking about a handful of topics today maybe possibly or possibly not in order I want to talk about the world championship of Halo that I just saw, and there's so much to it. And then after that, I've also uh, found out some new interesting information about uh, skill-based matchmaking, aka engagement optimization matchmaking, along with, it's got somewhat to do with what might happen with Microsoft now that Microsoft officially owns Activision Blizzard, and uh, want to talk about, you know, I mean... I mean, it, uh, you know, because this, this channel obviously used to be a Call of Duty only channel. I mean, well, it, it was just a Call of Duty channel and now I hardly even talk about Call of Duty anymore. So in case anybody wanted to hear me talk about Call of Duty, well, here you go. So um, where to start? I might even timestamp time this because this is going to be a lot longer. But let's let, let's get into it, shall we? So um, Halo Worlds was very unique this year. So all the way in the grand finals, you had Optic, who won it last year, right? Against FaZe. And uh, FaZe is composed of guys that basically dominated Halo 5 back in the day. And they just hadn't, uh, they hadn't done as much this year. They had won one tournament, but they hadn't really won the big one up until now. But what was most, what was more impressive than that is how they won it. The fact that they won it against Optic, plus they did something that hasn't been done previously, uh, according to what they said. And that is that, like, th the guys that won phase, not only did they end up winning, like, I don't know, like eight games in a row, but they were in loser's bracket because they f the first time they actually lost to Optic and then they got sent to the loser's bracket because it's double elimination, right? Once you lose this, uh, the second uh, a second series, you're you're basically done. So uh, after losing the first series, they basically got sent to elimination in uh, you know from like day one or day two of the tournament. And basically, what this means is, in order to, like if you make it to the grand finals, you have to beat the opposing team in a best of seven, not once but twice, and they did it, and it's never been done before. And not only that, they did it by winning like, I don't know, like eight games in a row. They lost the first two and then they won eight in a row. I, I watched the whole thing happen and these guys were hot. Like they were on fire. The skill on display, I mean, granted, when you're, you know, when you're at a world championship for any game, I mean, the skill displayed is always going to be impressive to see. But holy crap, like I'd never seen that level of like and there were even a few players like i was familiar with the players that were playing obviously but some of these other players man i was like holy shit you know because i've seen them play before but they just didn't play like that you know it, it, there was something else it's like those they were on fire and then before the last game optic took like a 15 minute break or something like that in order to kind of i guess regroup and to talk and that didn't do them any good they still lost the following match but I even tweeted about it. I basically said, oh, they're icing them. It's an old, it's an old school tactic, yet effective. As a matter of fact, I believe that's what happened with Venus Williams when, you know, she first turned pro or right before she turned pro or something like that. I remember watching the movie with, uh, with Will Smith. Um, uh, so th that, like at the end of that movie, that's what was going on. Like she was being iced, so to speak, because she was so on fire. She was unstoppable. And then she ended up losing the tournament. And I was like, oh, no, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully FaZe doesn't lose. But to be honest, I would have loved to have seen, uh, like, either way, though, I was rooting for one of those two teams to win because I was a fan of the guys that are on now on FaZe. Like, I was a fan of those guys since Halo 5 because they dominated Halo 5 except for one tournament in which they lost, in which Shotzi Shots was playing. And I think Renegade was playing with him as well. And Renegade is now a part of FaZe. And Shotzi now plays COD. So, um, uh it's like wow it, it, just wow and um and, and i would have loved to have seen formal win because you know he would have joined the three ring club 
And he also would have been the only player to have three rings into, into which two of them were from Halo and one of them were for COD. But here is the most unique thing, though. I think Optic is going to come back stronger than ever next year or next season or whatnot because before tonight, they had never been, they'd never gotten their asses handed to them like that before. They were always that team that performed remarkably well. And obviously, they won champs last year and. They've been a very, very consistent team and one of the more dominating teams in the entire league. And for them to get dominated like that, and as a matter of fact, not just that, but they also like they were pretty much dominating. Like they didn't lose a single um, a single set at all. They, it came close the first time they faced face when they sent them to elimination. It was like three to two. But like for the entire tournament, they just won flawlessly. And when i saw that phase was was going to be in the grand finals i was like oh this is going to be good it's either it's either going to go one of two ways it's either going to be done quick or it's going to go the distance and it it certainly went the distance but i thought it was going to be even longer because if optic had won more matches and if both of the series ended up being longer um it, i mean they'd probably still be playing right now as of the time of this recording um it, it was a long day of halo man i was <laughs> Oh man, and uh, it, it was it was such a joy to watch to watch all those players play as well as they did in the way that they did, um, you know. So so I think the fact that those guys took the beating that they did in the way that they did, um, I think it's going to make them a much stronger team next year because they had they'd never been beaten like that before. I think part of what played a role was that maybe perhaps they got a little bit too comfortable mentally. I mean, they wanted to win, no doubt about it. They wanted to have two world championships in a row that would have been an amazing accomplishment nonetheless and then of course for formal as well uh, with his personal accomplishment but uh i think maybe perhaps them knowing that if they lost the first series they still had another series so they kind of had to get out of jail at get out of jail free card so to speak that might have played a role you know might have made them feel a little bit more relaxed than they otherwise would have been um i don't think that was the case because they actually won the first two games and then after that once uh once they went to capture the flag on um uh on the tip of my tongue the name of the map damn it uh once they did that which was phase's strong point like from there it was dominant and then after that there was like a there was a slayer which which they lost by one point <laughs> it was 49 to 49 and then snakebite got the got the kill to make it 50 49 and to end the game and i think at that point they were just demoralized and then those guys were just catching heat they were winning in dominant fashion and it just really hit them. Like the first hit was obviously when the when the whole bracket got reset after they lost the first series. And then after that, it was like, you know, they just kept on losing. And then I think after that, it, it kind of really just hit them hard mentally. Um, and the fact that they had like, you know, they had they had to get it, get out of jail free cards. Like you lost the first series, it's fine. You're still in it. You just have to win the second one. So uh, to, to beat the defending champions twice in two best of sevens like that in a row and in dominating fashion out of 10 games played, you win eight of them and those eight are one in a row. Holy hell. You know, uh, it's I don't think I've seen. Uh, and, and again, it's it, according to the casters, it's never been done before, like in terms of coming back from from losers bracket and winning the whole thing at Worlds. So uh i'm i'm very happy for the gentleman that lost oh fun fact every single member of that phase halo team has three rings <laughs> every single one of those guys has won three world championships you know snakebite royal two renegade and frosty have all won three championships that is nuts um so that it's like wow that's that's 12 rings in the entire team you know not even the optic dynasty team had that many rings Karma had three, Crim6 had three, Formal had one, Scump had one. And and at the time when they played, uh, it's like Crim6 had two, Karma had three, and Formal and Scump had one. So, um, but uh, still impressive though. I mean, I mean, of course, uh, I'm not really, I'm just making for fun conversation. You know, it's, there's so many different comparisons and contrasts to make between the, 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 uh, the Halo team and the COD team, but this makes for an interesting conversation, but uh, congrats to FaZe, man. I, wow, I was absolutely impressed with how they played and how they basically like, you know, how they came back from loser's bracket and everything like that. It was, 
it was incredible it was an incredible thing to watch i i was actually playing some halo and i kept on going back and forth and watching that and shit it was it was great it was a lot it was a lot of fun it was very interesting to see and when you're seeing the best of the best play like that and it's for the most and it's for the most prestigious you know reward in you know because it's world championship it's for the ring and on top of that i believe it also has the biggest money prize uh first place won four hundred thousand dollars so that's a hundred thousand dollars a player so um that is something that you can't really you know uh you you can't sneeze at that either so so good for them i'm, I'm very uh, i'm very happy for the team and uh, also uh before changing topics here uh the meta for ranked halo infinite is about to change starting like in a couple days less than a couple days now um we're gonna go from the battle rifle starts to the dmr well it's now gonna be called the bandit evo which is gonna be a, a different version of the bandit that already got released like a few months ago or something like that but it's uh it's gonna be uh it's gonna be different it's gonna it's gonna be a lot like the dmr from halo reach but of course without bloom so uh and and we saw a gameplay of it as well so it's and it's gonna widen the skill gap because the battle rifle is uh, not only is it a little too easy to use, but it, it, that's not it. Like the, the strafing and, and getting the patterns and matching the patterns is, is what matters. But the thing is, like with with the battle rifle, you got too much partial damage and it's a burst weapon. So you can, you know, and with the and with the desync in the game, which happens to be a bigger issue than normal. Uh, it, it's like the it's it's like the, the, the weapon itself is not completely hit scan. It's like you can hit one of your bullets, you know, depending on the angle or whatnot or or sometimes a delay but uh you can hit one of your bullets but you may miss with the other two or hit two of the three bullets or something like that there's plenty of times where you're like man i swear that should have been a perfect that was a headshot and how come it didn't register how come he's not dead so uh with the dmr completely different it's going to take one extra burst but it's one it's a one burst rifle so uh five five shots will give you a perfect or sometimes even six depending on how you hit the target but and nonetheless you either hit your target or you don't so that's that's going to be much much better it's going to make the going to make the desync seem a little bit less um less of an issue so to speak so i like that it's going to widen the skill gap and i'm looking forward to using it i'm looking forward to it feeling uh, i know uh, just by looking at the footage that we saw i know it's going to play different than the bandit that we have now because uh that one kicks a little too much and plus this one's got a scope so they've made it to where it's like literally like a hybrid between the the br in terms of how it handles and how accurate it is and all that stuff and of course the bandit or the the dmr or whatnot so um so so i'm personally that's like my big thing i can't wait to to try it out and to play it for myself and uh i think i'm gonna absolutely love it because the battle rifle is what i loved uh, about halo infinite the most along with uh, the ranked maps and stuff like that that got kept me playing so uh i think i may like it even more with uh the evo we'll see we'll see um but anyway with that being said now uh i'm gonna get into uh the microsoft like uh, i'm gonna get into eomm or sbmm call of duty and microsoft acqu uh, acquiring i mean not acquiring but now officially owning activision blizzard because i had found out some um some info that i didn't quite know of before i was always curious about it i wonder if, if that was the case but i kind of got a little bit more insight uh, completely by accident, actually, because I was actually watching a stream, a Halo stream, actually, and he raided a YouTuber that I was familiar with, and that YouTuber is uh, Mint Blitz, who does excellent Halo content, pretty sizable channel. So basically what I had learned is that Halo Infinite has its own version of EOMM. You heard that right engagement optimization matchmaking uh, obviously we haven't found a patent for it yet or anything like that but somebody else he had mentioned somebody else that made a video about it and detailed it greatly but i don't think it works 100 percent the exact same as the call of duty patent to where you know to where it gives you uh to where it gives a worse player bigger hitboxes or anything like that i, I don't think it does it to that extent uh However, it is there for the same purpose, though, to basically make players play more. But the thing is, like, whenever I play ranked, which is what I usually play, uh, and I even played some social games today, which is basically what uh, what the version of pubs are. And what and my ping, except for one game, was very consistent. So um, and in ranked, it's always consistent, except for, you know, some minor, minor times here and there. But for the most part, I get anywhere from high 30s to mid 40s ping for every game of ranked that i play in halo infinite so and as you know halo infinite is not 
nearly as popular as it was on launch, despite the fact that the game is way better now. But obviously, the, the launch itself was still rough. A lot of players were still saying that it needed to be delayed yet another year. And then there was lacking content and all these other issues. So but right now, especially with uh, Season 5 about to come out, um, it is going to be uh, a very, very, very complete Halo game with a lot of different ways to play and with ranked and unranked matches. Firefight will be coming within the next, I think, few weeks after that releases. And they've they've introduced a different variation of that as well, which a lot of fans are excited for. So, uh, you know, uh, believe it or not, I, I think Halo Infinite is one of the best first person shooters out that you can play right now, um, honestly. And it's free to play, obviously. So um so with that being said though uh, that brings me to call of duty now obviously microsoft now owns call of duty so remember how i made videos talking about you know what if phil spencer removes skill-based matchmaking and now granted i i was referring to engagement optimization matchmaking but the entire world and community calls it sbmm right so uh so that's what we're gonna call it <laughs> so um and that just the fact that what they're doing with halo just goes to show you that skill-based matchmaking is you know or engagement optimization matchmaking is uh is not going to go anywhere especially when it comes to a game that's like free to play and stuff like that because again they need to make money and it's microtransactions and all that other stuff i mean they want to keep player retention they want to players to invest more time playing a game and the way they do that is via the algorithm you know i, I miss the old days to where it was just about being a good game because if a game truly was good back in the day, I mean, look at Halo, for instance, like Phil Spencer himself was at the Halo event. Uh, he was at uh, uh, at COD. I'm sorry, not COD Champs uh, at Halo Worlds today. And, you know, they did a little interview with him. And he was very appreciative of the Halo fans. I mean, they, they, they basically said it himself, like Halo fans have been to get, have been with us for a long time. And we're very appreciative of that. He's like any he, and he recalled the days when he first started when he first played Halo CE or Combat Evolved which was the very first Halo game and all that stuff. So it's like, yeah, I mean, the guy is generally, genu genuinely a gamer. Obviously, I already knew that. And he knows what he's talking about. But at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, um, m maybe that's not up to him. I don't know. All I know is that when Bobby Kotick leaves, which is going to be at the beginning of the year next year, Phil is going to be taking over. Right now, Bobby's just going to be ensuring that the, the transition goes smoothly. And then, uh, you know, he's reporting to Phil. And then after that, Phil is pretty much going to take over and then bobby is going to uh i actually saw an interview with him they had him on some sort of news some some i think some british news thing and i saw it on twitter or x and basically uh bobby according to what bobby said he's going to be going into philanthropy after he's done and he's also interested in uh, reforming the education system for uh a through 12 so it's like hey whatever <laughs> if that's what he's going to do then okay um but uh the thing is at this point right now i've seen so many memes on twitter and stuff like that and like the whole community is rejoicing in the fact that he's going to be gone in january um a thoughts actually posted a funny tweet he's like i just got off a, a discord call with phil spencer and i'm paraphrasing here he's like i got off uh, i got a discord call from phil spencer and yeah as of january 2024 uh what's it called uh skill-based matchmaking will no longer be a thing in call of duty uh eight thoughts is absolutely hilarious um you know his tweets will his tweets will definitely make you laugh if you know that he's being uh if he's if you know he's being comical and all that kind of stuff so anyway um now because of what they have done with halo we can certainly say that this is definitely not going to be the fact they've done uh, an mmr system ever since halo 5 um maybe since halo 4 but i doubt it but i could be wrong but for the most part since halo 5 uh, that's how i know for sure i know that for sure um, they've done some sort of MMR, you know, system in social matches, which is the equivalent to pubs and social matches are sweaty and stuff like that. So it's like, mm, it is what it is. Um, but uh, but like I said, I don't think it puts because I played a lot of Halo 5, both competitive and social. And I can tell you that I don't think it works exactly like Call of Duty in terms of uh, messing with your ping on the fly or uh, making hitboxes for bad players larger on the fly or increasing the aim assist of bad players on the fly or decreasing the aim assist on good players on the fly. I don't think it exactly works like that. It does have its own algorithmic, algorithmic formula, no doubt about it, because that's what's required for systems like this. 
But other than that, um, it's it. The reason why it's there is to keep player retention, right? They want players to play more, uh, play more, which increases the chances of them buying something from the store. Basically, same reasons. But um, but compared to COD's system, which we've seen the patent thanks to Why So Serious in his three and a half hour video of it, uh, his stream actually of it, and then he's broken it down into multiple videos as well and posted it on his channel. Um, uh, we haven't found anything. We, to my knowledge, there we haven't found any patents or anything like that by Microsoft in terms of, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, if anything, at best, it might get the same kind of treatment that uh, Halo has gotten, right? Which is called, uh, I think they call it the True Skill Two system. In Halo 5, it was originally called the True Skill System, and then in Halo Infinite, it's been upgraded to quote-unquote True Skill 2. Um, now, as far as the desync and, and, and some of the hit registration issues that happen with Halo Infinite, which is, uh, which, you know, which is part of a problem, that I don't think that has anything to do with that. It's actually, that has actually gotten to do with the servers and the engine, because the engine is a slip space engine, I believe it's called, and that was the problem right so and there were big problems in development with that so just kind of wanted to throw that out there um because the engines can obviously make a difference so uh so they wanted to do that uh they 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 went a little bit too uh too ambitious and they ended up paying the price for it and the game ended up getting a lot of problems so because prior to that halo really well like in recent years, Halo really hasn't had hit detection issues. Like if you go back to Halo 5, Halo 5's hit detection, in my experience for the most part, was pretty damn solid. And not only that, it was pretty damn solid since beta. And beta for that game was, uh, came out, and it lasted for about three weeks, I think. And it came out like about a year before the game's release. So it was a long beta that lasted three straight weeks. And it was way before the game's release. So, and then by the time the game came out, let me tell you, regardless of whatever game mode you played or whatnot, you were getting a good connection and the hit detection was awesome in Halo 5. You know, some people didn't like the Halo 5 multiplayer, which is fine because they didn't like the advanced movement, like with uh, some of the things that you could do. But uh, when you're talking about the foundation of what a Halo game should be, including the hit detection forward slash connection, let me tell you, uh, Halo 5 was very, very solid. And right now there's like a PC community for it. And there are people that are playing Halo 5 at high frame rate. And that is amazing because for the longest time, people have been wanting to do that. And I guess a few modders had done that, had made it happen and it made it a reality. So people, people can play Halo 5 on PC some way, somehow. I don't know how exactly, but they can, they can play Halo 5 on PC and, and, uh, it's great. But one thing I do want to get into, though, speaking of modders, is that you remember when uh, Activision, before they were bought out by before Microsoft took over, um, you know, they sent a cease and desist to uh, SM Squared. Um, I, I've mentioned this in videos and I'll mention it in this one. Uh, I believe that uh, there's definitely a chance that uh, Microsoft might hire those guys. Or, you know, maybe even re revoke the cease and desist or something like that. And the thing is, if they were to do that, I think there's a chance that they'll do it under wraps. Like, they'll do it, like, as a secret. And then it'll kind of come out of nowhere. And everybody will go, holy shit. But there's something else I wanted to mention that I had. I had talked to um, a streamer. He was very popular within the Call of Duty community. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name him because I don't want any possible negativity going his way. And with the internet, you know, sometimes some people can like twist words and stuff like that. And but anyway, this this person basically said that until proven otherwise, um, the the whole six v six arcade shooter genre is pretty much dead. Um, and the reason being is because it has already been done to death. For so many years. And then on top of that, year after year. So, um, he certainly has a point when he says that. And it kind of made me think twice. And it's like, he also said something along the lines of, you know, it's, it's going to be something that players think they want. And then after either a few weeks or maybe at the most a few months or so, the game will go dry. Like it'll die out. 
Um, so in other words, or it may not die out, but in other words, I think what he's also trying to say is that even if it weren't not to die, like the, the, the player base would shrink considerably after the first few weeks or after the first few months. Um, I know that every month and every three months we're going to have content drops for X Defiant, for instance. So that, 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 those were his basic thoughts on X Defiant because I asked him, I said, hey, what are your thoughts on X Defiant? And he answered. And I asked him to clarify, and that's how I got what I just said to you. So, uh, and I know that he's not the only one that thinks this way. I've seen it on Twitter and stuff like that. But when you ask somebody who, um, who you know of, you know, to kind of elaborate on their opinions as to why they think this or they think that, um, it kind of yet opens your eyes yet again. I mean, it's like, it's like in, in the back of my mind, right? Uh, you guys know how much I support X Defiant, right? And so do you guys, because there's at least 300 of you that would not be subscribed to this channel if you didn't support X Defiant. And, the, and you 300 subscribers came pretty quickly. And that's something that's very, very rare from my channel. Okay. And I've been doing this for eight and a half years. So uh, even though I still don't know as much as I should about how all this stuff works, I've also learned a lot along the way. And uh, one thing I can say is that like, for for me to get 300 subscribers or 300 plus subscribers out of nowhere uh, well not out of nowhere you know obviously it was it came from the x defiant but uh to all of a sudden for that to happen it's like you know people have an interest in that right they have an interest and a passion for the game and they want the game and obviously we know that in the beta um in the x defiant open beta we know that we had two and a half million players which is a good number to have and obviously if you involve last gen consoles you're gonna have even more um so x defiant in and of itself when you look at it from the point of view of what was told to me by this streamer for instance um and even to a certain degree even some not only some other things that i've seen on twitter or x but also some other things that i've seen in videos and stuff like that because a lot of some people even have mixed opinions it's like they want the game to succeed they're rooting for it but how but like what what are the realistic chances of that happening now could it still happen absolutely kind of like what happened tonight with halo at worlds right i mean it could happen but how often does it happen right so x defiant has a lot to prove but one thing it has going for itself other than the fact that it's free to play and that it has developers that are developing it that know that know what they're doing one thing that it has going for it is the fact that there's no sbmm okay no sbmm no eomm they're going to do it the old classic fashion way to where they're not going to be putting some sort of algorithm into the game that, uh, you know, they will have a battle pass and they will have things that you can buy in the store, but they're taking the classic old fashioned approach to keep you playing. They're going to keep on giving you content. They want to be around for years. Mark Rubin himself had mentioned that and they want to do it like that. It's like, if our game is good, it will, you know, it will quote unquote speak for itself, so to speak. But at the same time, you can't ignore a historic fact, such as, for instance, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, just to give you an example, right? And I saw a video on this, so I remember the numbers. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, from microtransactions alone, in its year of release, made 6 billion, and that's with a B, by the way, 6 billion dollars. And that's just from the microtransactions alone. And you guys remember how shitty that system was, right? It was all 100% chance. It might have even been rigged with an algorithm. You name it. You know, because I, I played Team Deathmatch and Free For All, which didn't give as much XP as like, let's say, a Domination or a Kill Confirmed, right? Uh, especially a Domination, right? So uh, I, I played level 1000 on Xbox and I played to, I don't know how far I got on PlayStation when, when I played that, but you guys get the deal. Um, I played it a lot. And the only weapons that I got were the ones that, I didn't want such as shotguns or snipers which were weapons that i didn't use i used submachine guns and assault rifles i ended up getting one with submachine gun but then that was it you know so um and i never paid a cent for it never never paid a dime i did it by earning crypto keys and i did some of the you know um some of the occasional operations like win 75 free-for-all matches or something like that or, or 75 games or something like that and then you'd be able to you know be guaranteed a new weapon or something like that um but still the majority of the stuff i got were snipers shotguns and uh the melee weapons that you could either throw or not throw so that's all i got <laughs> so 
Uh, that pretty much says it all. That's why I speculate that uh, maybe there might have been, if there's an algorithm for the gameplay, it's like there sure as hell might be an algorithm for the matchmaking. And you sure as hell know that that's going to be a hell of a lot harder to find the patent for that if there even is one, which there probably isn't. That's probably under wraps if it exists. Um, or it just could have been the luck of the draw, you know? And because I, because I, I know of players that have played a lot of that game, probably not as much as me, um, that got all the weapons. <laughs> and I was like, really? They're like, yeah. I was like, wow. Um, but anyway, uh, but those, that player that told me that also went for dark matter camo and actually got dark matter camo. So maybe the algorithm didn't know what to give them or what not to give them because they were literally using every weapon. So, um, but anyway, um, with that being said, uh, X defiant has a lot more to prove than even we see or think at the surface. Right. And if you'll excuse me for a second, I'm going to take a swig of my water because quite frankly, uh, yeah, talking for this period of time without drinking any water is not good, so it'll make my throat dry, so give me a second. Cheers to your health, by the way. Ah, delicious. Now, uh, so, like, when half of the community thinks that a game is going to die, and when half of the community thinks that it's going to succeed, um... I think it's really interesting because I obviously I want the game to release. We all want the game to release and we all want the game to do well. And there is so much that this game is trying to do the right way or the classic way and the way that gamers want to where it's really going to uh it's really going to prove something if it works or if it doesn't work. So, let's say the game fails, people will be like, well, this is what happens when you try to do something the right way. It's not going to make any money, so therefore, that's why Activision never did it, because they were never going to profit, the games were going to die, and the business would go out of business. So, I mean, even though I don't think Activision would go out of business, <laughs> uh, but you get the point. Um, so, it's like, yeah, this is why they don't do it, because it just doesn't work anymore, or it doesn't work. Um, but if X Defiant succeeds, at the same time... It uh, people can point their finger at it and be like, hey, this is an example of how you can do it right and still succeed financially. Now, the question is, how much are they going to succeed financially, though? Um, you know what I mean? That's 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 the thing. Um, I don't know what the percentage of good to bad players are, to be honest with you. And on top of that, honestly, another reason why skill based matchmaking doesn't belong in pubs is because it's kind of already there on by default, in a sense. You know why? Because. Uh, players by average now are better than what they used to be 10 years ago. And I'm going to say 10 years ago because, um, you know, it's a solid number first and foremost. And even though I could say something as soon as five years ago before Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops 4, <clears throat> I was still stomping lobbies, of course, and I never reverse boosted to do it. I never, uh, I never cherry picked lobbies. I never, I never did anything shady in order to get super easy lobbies and protective brackets or anything like that. Um, and I would still, I would still play pretty damn well. And, and I'm overly aggressive too. You know, if I played slightly more passive, not camping, but slightly more passive and with more of a thought, you know, behind the madness, as opposed to overly rushing and being overly aggressive, my KD would have been even higher, even though I really don't give a damn about KD anymore. Even back then, I didn't care. Um, you know, uh, it was always like between a two and a two five. <laughs> you know, and my so was my score per minute. My score per minute was above average as well. So it's like I didn't care. I just I just wanted to have fun and I wanted to win the games that I played in and I wanted to enjoy doing it. I wanted to go through the grind of leveling up, prestiging, unlocking weapons, you know, getting that dopamine from getting a kill and the win and all that kind of other stuff. That's that's what it was all about for me. And of course, getting the footage for YouTube, you know, because back in the day, I used to all the footage that I would post would just be good gameplays. And trust me when I say I had more than enough. Um, I, I mean, if I wanted to, I could go back in my YouTube videos and just mute the sound and do a brand new commentary. And all you'll see in the background is nuke videos, uh, either nuke from world war two, a deatomizer strike from, uh, what's it called from, um, infinite warfare or a 70 kill team deathmatch or something like that. I've got that all, uh, uh, a, a, a flawless free for all. I've got that too, including one to where in black ops three, somebody managed to drop raps on me, but I escaped the raps and still got 30 and 0 and, and it's, it's there believe it or not it is there so um yeah it's um 
X Defiant really is a rare type of game, and that's one thing that really has me rooting for it so much, because it's literally trying to do everything morally correct, and it wants to prove that, like, hey, this is how we made games in the first place, and even in 2023 or 2024, depending on when the game gets released, um, we can still do things the right way, and we can still succeed financially, our gamers will be happy, our community will be happy, and we'll be happy. And the game will last. Um, I mean, like when you look at like CSGO, like despite the fact that I don't know too much about CSGO, CSGO is the GOAT, man. CSGO is absolutely the GOAT of first person shooters that managed to survive so damn long, despite the fact being old and you still had a community that played the living shit out of it. Um, and that's to be respected, man. And on top of that, it was all, only PC. It was a much smaller community. Well, uh, and what I mean by smaller community is, you know, compared to the number of people that play on console. Now, granted, obviously, uh, a good healthy amount of players probably still play CSGO, despite the fact that it's just PC. But you get the point, right? At the end of the day, uh, we're talking like 15 years now, 15 plus years that CSGO has been out. And not and, and I can assure you that 15 years ago, more people than today did not have gaming PCs. It was much more rare back then, 15 years ago. What are we looking at here? Uh, 20, that's 2008, right? That's 2008 when CSGO was, must have been released. Um, if we're talking 15 years ago, which is the number that I keep hearing being tossed around. It might even be longer than that. I don't know. Um, but even back in, in that day, not many people had gaming PCs, right? Or a PC or a computer strong enough to be able to, to play games like that. So that, that's, that speaks volumes about a game. And nowadays, obviously, that's not the case. More people have PCs, but PCs are still the minority of platforms used because they're the more, they're the more expensive ones and, and everything else that comes with that. Um, so, and, and some people are just intimidated by it and everything like that. So, and, and the thing is, as far as PCs and the whole cheating thing goes, and which we're going to get into in a minute, um, that, you know, uh, people always blame PCs and stuff like that. And that's not always the case now. Um, right now there's more to it than that. We got people, you know, uh, going to Amazon and, and ordering Cronus Zens or whatever else that they can order and they can cheat that way to where they can, you know, do all sorts of crazy shit. So it's no longer limited to just that. And plus you get all these people that are making cheats now that are also for console. Granted, you have to get them from a PC uh, first and get it from the internet. And then you can kind of go from there, however they do it. But, um, uh, but man, uh, cheating as far as Call of Duty goes is running rampant. And that's another thing that has me a little bit worried about X Defiant. These guys need to really, uh, like I even made a video to where I tweeted at Mark Rubin and he actually responded to me and he, and he, um, he said that they're looking into that and I haven't gotten an update ever since. But um, I said, are you going to be like, uh, are, they, are you going to do something about the Krona Zens? Are you going to ban them or something like that? So um, so he's, I guess he was kind of looking into that. So uh, I don't know what happened ever since, but I hope that's something that is the case because uh, we want the, the game to be as even Steven as possible. I mean, in any game out there, you're always going to have cheaters here and there, but I mean... I mean, back in the day, holy crap, you know, compared to compared to the number of people that are cheating today, I mean, it wasn't, you know, you, you'd run into a few of them, sure, but like it was nothing in compared to today. Um, and, and it's a serious problem. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are doing it. And uh, and it's, it's something that could actually uh, kill a game, to be honest. I mean, cheaters are already running rampant in the beta. So, uh, and obviously Call of Duty or old Activision not doing anything about it, but maybe with Microsoft under the helm now, maybe they will do something about it. Um, I, I know that there, there are people that cheat in Halo and, and, and I only made it to Onyx and ranked in the first season of, of Halo or in season five now. So in the first season was the only time I ever made the Onyx 1500 and then that was it. I just never played on that uh, again during that season. And then I just, uh, played the next season or whatever it was. Uh, but they've obviously remade, they all, they've also made it harder to kind of, you know, move up. So, but up until recently I was, I mean, right now I'm just kind of playing it casually. I'm just in, playing it to enjoy it. And, but, uh, ultimately, um, I was always a diamond player, like mid tier diamond or so, you know, I played completely solo most of the time. And so, <clears throat> um, and, uh, I haven't really run into any cheaters, but I do know, that they are more prevalent in Onyx because they cheat their way to get to Onyx level, and that is it. So, um, 
but uh, I think compared to what you see in Call of Duty, the amount of cheaters that you see in Halo are far less. But I'm sure, I'm sure there are people out there that are using Cronuses and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure that there are even parents out there giving the, giving that as a gift to their teens. GameStop itself, we know, promotes it. It's like, hey, you for an extra hundred bucks, you know, your your kid will love this. And then, of course, as a parent or a grandparent, you'd be like, "Ooh, what's that? You know, so and at the same time, a lot of people, a lot of the casual audience or people that are getting things for other people don't know. Uh, I mean, they don't take it seriously. They don't take gaming seriously. They're like, oh, you know, it's like it's just a game. Who cares if they cheat? Yeah, it's like, hey, let them have fun with it. It's another toy or whatnot. It'll give them an advantage. Yeah, why not? You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like having a wild card in poker or something like that, you know, so uh, that's the way they view it. But we know that it's much more serious than that. We know that it's, you know. Gaming is a very big deal now. It's something that should be taken more ser seriously than it is because it's give it, it's an industry in the billions, <laughs> and uh, and just to acquire micro, uh, you know, Activision Blizzard, Microsoft had to pay sixty eight point seven billion dollars to acquire them. Okay, so you can't tell me that that's not a serious transaction. It's huge. It's the biggest transaction in gaming history. So therefore. You know, uh, and more people know about it. You know, obviously more people know about gaming now than what they did 10, 20 years ago and stuff like that. Sure, it's it's become pop culture to be uh, to be accepted as um, as a gamer, right? Uh, to be a gamer is more socially accepted now. I remember when I was 19 years old, 19 or 20 years old, you know, going to pick up my copy of Halo 2. I saw a man who was probably somewhere around my age now, give or take a few years. And uh, he uh, he was picking up Halo 2, and I was like, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm like, wow, I'm seeing a grown ass adult, you know, uh, picking up Halo 2. And I'm like, I'm like, you play Halo? He's like, yeah. He's like, listen, man, this is what I do. He's like, I'm like, okay. And I was I sat there listening, <laughs> like literally listening to the guy. He's, he's like, I I got the girlfriend, I got I got the job, I got the video games, the gym. That's what I do. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, wow, I can actually relate to this guy. Wow, maybe I'm not that nuts. You know what I mean? So uh, gaming was becoming pop culture even back then. It just wasn't as common and it wasn't as big as it is today. It wasn't as open as it is today, like some other aspects of life. It's just it, of life. It's just not as open today as it was back then. You know what I mean? It's like back in the day, we used to be kind of like closet gamers. It's like, let's say you're, let's say you're dating a really hot chick or whatnot. She likes you, you like her, and she wants to know more about what you do with your time. You know, it's kind of like you wanted to kind of keep it a secret that you played video games. You know, I remember I dated a, a girl once, um, and uh, she, and one problem I had uh was that she didn't want me she's like i'm not losing you to a video game you know i don't want to hear you playing halo all the time or something like that and i'm like listen i, I told her i said listen i'm not going to deny time with you so that way i could play a video game instead right like if we're going to go out we're going to go out you know but if it's any typical day to where you're doing your thing and you're not with me and i'm doing my thing if i got free time and we're not doing anything and if i feel like playing a game i'm going to play a game so, you know, basically, I was basically just telling her that, like, you know, you're not going to lose me to Halo. It's not like I'm going to it's not like you'll be standing, you know, you know, in a in a in a nighty behind me and I'm going to completely ignore you because I'm playing Halo. You know, if that happens, the game is going to be shut off. The, uh, you know, the game is going to be shut off and we're going to be taking care of business because, hey, that's a fun game, too. You know what I mean? And you just as a guy, you don't you don't deny that shit. Right. You, you just you don't. <laughs> You don't deny it, right? Unless you've already gone a couple rounds and you're already drained and you can't go anymore. And it's like, hey, <laughs> I can't. I'm about to die here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, th but that's how it was back back in the day, uh, you know, about 10, 15, 20 years ago. It was you, if you were in your if you were past high school and if you played video games or if you enjoyed video games, it was almost to a sense to where you had to almost like it was a secret, you know, and, and if anybody knew they played video games, like, really, you still play video games? What the hell's wrong with you or something like that? So. Let's fast forward all this time later, people are learning to shut their mouths because there are people that are playing video games and making a shit ton of money doing it. So and ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what makes a difference. Right. She may hate like I'm sure there are some girls out there that hate the fact that their man plays video games for a living. But uh, when she she's when she sees how much money he's making per month, she shuts her mouth because it puts doctors to shame it, it, it like seriously. Like when you get some of these bigger names out here that are making millions every month and on top of that, you've got endorsements and all that other stuff. 
I guarantee you she's going to shut her mouth. <laughs> so so for some people, it's like that. And then at the same time, for some other people, it's like, hey, they legitimately think, hey, you play video games. Hey, that's cool. You know, I got no problems with that. So that is another factor to consider as well. So but uh, but back in the day, there was only one way that you can shut her up. And, and, and like if you were making a legit living playing video games and stuff like that, then that's the only thing she's like, yeah, I have a problem with it, but it pays the bills. So therefore, I don't bother him with it. Kind of like a parent almost, you know, it's like, uh, you know, because back in the day, you know, uh, even though, you know, watching sports and, 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 and or going to a bar and drinking is a waste of time, you know, everybody just preferred to waste their time differently, whether it was playing a video game or whatever it was. Video games was just <sighs> frowned upon, you know, as a complete waste of time and you're not getting anything out of it and blah, blah, blah. So and let me tell you something, man, if it helps you, if, if it helps you know, take you out of the normal stresses of life, you're getting something out of it. If it helps improve your muscle, uh, eye muscle coordination and all that kind of stuff, hand-eye coordination and all that, you're getting something out of it. If you're being entertained, you're getting something out of it. Name a whole bunch of, you know, habits that will entertain you and do these things for you, but yet are not, uh, you know, shunned upon. But why is video, why are video games looked down upon like that? You know what I mean? So a lot of people are being a lot more educated today in terms of some of the benefits. Now, granted, you know, it could, just like everything that's healthy, it could also be unhealthy if you abuse it, right? So um, it is what it is. You know, like a lot of these pro gamers or whatnot, I'm pretty sure a lot of them are going to have back problems uh, because of all the crazy amounts of sitting that they're doing and playing the games. Maybe except for Lucid because Lucid is, uh, his posture is perfect. You know, he's, he's, he's uh, the optic, you know, he's the optic gaming Halo player and he's got perfect posture. The way he sits back in his chair and everything like that, like that man's got posture. I don't, you know, as long as he exercises and as long as he stretches, I think he'll be fine. <laughs> you know, uh, it's guys like Scump that I worry about because of how he leans forward when he games and stuff like that. So it is what it is. But um, anyway, um, but but yeah, it really is amazing how far we've come, but we still have a long way to go when it comes to this whole gaming thing. And when it comes to, you know, uh, how it's viewed and how it's treated. Um, and the thing is, I don't know if certain aspects are going to change or not, because Ultimately, at the end of the day, like I just said, money talks, right? Like if, if money will shut your girlfriend up or the woman that you're interested in up, despite the fact that she doesn't like you playing video games, but if you're making a handsome living doing it or a living doing it, if that's going to shut her up, then, well, at the end of the day, if these things that these people are doing to uh, gain audience retention, even if it means, uh, even if it means, you know, uh, literally handicapping their bad players and making and giving them false, uh, a false sense of uh, accomplishment or whatnot, or a false sense of entertainment or a false sense of, you know, whatever, you know, participation trophies or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if it makes money, then they're going to do it, you know? And the thing is, the majority of people don't know this. The majority of people that are in the gaming community are not going to listen to this channel or any other channel for that matter. They'll know who some of these big gamers are, but at the same time, they're not going to watch their streams on a regular basis. They're not going to watch, uh, you know what I mean? Like today, when I looked at the, uh, you know, when I was on the Twitch channel and I was watching the Halo stream, you know how many people were watching at max when Opti Gaming was playing? Like 75,000, somewhere on there. 75,000. Do you think, uh, you know, that's a very small number when you consider how many people play video games, you know? And at the same time, you know, that's those are just like the hardcore people. And, and, only, a per, and only a percentage of those people actually play the game, believe it or not. You know, they'll watch it, but only a percentage of them will play the game like crazy. Um, not all of them will, will, a majority of them will, but some of them won't even play. They just, they'll just watch. Um, but most of them play. But uh, again, compared to the entire population, that's a very small, small number. But um, but but if you're watching Halo Worlds, you know, if there's if there's like, let's say, 100,000 people watching Halo Worlds, you know, from all the different channels, YouTube and all that kind of stuff. If you have a total of 100,000 or 200,000 people watching Halo Worlds, then maybe more uh, more people play Halo than we think, you know. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of people will only watch when Optic Gaming is playing, you know, which uh, in turn, Optic Gaming was created from COD. And then obviously, because of all this financial success that they've had, they've made a Halo team. And there you go. That's basically how it works. Once you fin are financially able to create something and you've got a lot of money, it's like you you want to multiply that, right? You want to become an entrepreneur or whatnot. It's like, OK, I'm going to create this team now for this game and I'm going to do this for that. And I'm just going to keep on finding, uh, building, uh, you know, investing in myself and find more ways to make money. I'll spend more money to make money and I'll have more money coming in from all sorts of ends instead of just one or two, you know. So that's basically the way it works. Every single financial, financially successful person does that. So whether it means having a side, even if it means having just another side gig or whether it means investing in stocks or whatever it is. So it is what it is. It's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess. 
But um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the that that's the only thing that scares me as far as competitive gaming is concerned, right? It's like uh, it's like uh, if it makes that much money, you know, uh, and, and that's another reason why I love X Defiant so much uh, is because it's it's not doing this, and it's literally going to be like the only game in 2023 that has a, that's got a multiplayer component that's not having this. You know, because uh, Fortnite has skill-based matchmaking. Um, Apex Legends has skill-based matchmaking. Uh, obviously, Call of Duty has skill-based matchmaking. Halo has skill-based matchmaking. X Defiant does not, and it's going to be a re- it's going to be released in 2023. So, um, and it's going to be free to play. And back in the day, uh, I mean, never really. Players really never needed to be held by the hand. I mean, all, all the product had to be was good and addictive. And players would just come back and play time and time again. It's one of the things that kept me coming back to playing again. Uh, that's for sure. Um, and the satisfaction of getting better at the game was another thing. But the fact that the game itself was fine, I didn't need an algorithm to uh, basically convince me to keep playing the game or to keep me playing at longer sessions. I'm pretty sure the majority of us that played COD you know, from the days when it was, you know, classic Call of Duty compared to what we know today. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of us put in more hours than what we thought we would put into the game, right? And when you look at the casual person that plays, dude, these people don't play as, they don't play all that much. However, if the game is really good, they're going to play more anyway. So it's like, you know, uh, people are restricted with time regardless of whether or not you have an algorithm in, in, in programmed into the game. So therefore... You really shouldn't have an algorithm into the game, but at the same time, they want to control that as well. They want to control the way you play or how much you play or what you play or how you play it. You know, um, it, you know, when you look at some of the devs that don't listen to pros when the pros want to offer advice, despite the fact that they call them down to get advice or whatever, uh, you know, the, these pros who play the game and break the game down better than anybody else, including the devs, because the devs are busy making the game. Uh, and when the pros play it, it's the other side of the fence, right? So it's like, you got to listen to these folks. And that's another thing that X Defiant's doing that a lot of other people are not. We live in a day to where pros themselves are being ignored. Like from the Call of Duty scene, from the Halo scene. Like, I kid you not, they're being ignored. Like hell, remember when, even, even Battle Royale, remember when uh, Blackout came out? Do you guys remember when Blackout came out for uh, Black Ops 4? A lot of people were complaining to Vaughn about... Um, what was it? Um, I don't want to use the word shield. What was it? Body armor level three. They, 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 were, they were complaining about body armor level three numerous times, like over Twitter and everything. Uh, and Vaughn heard it and he acknowledged it, but he said, I still believe that there's a place for body armor level three. And he kept it in the game and just kept on nerfing it or whatnot. But, you know, Vaughn has been in the gaming industry for a long time. He knows a lot. No doubt about it. A lot of respect for the guy and his accomplishments. Uh, but with that being said, you know, like when you look at when you look at him playing in the beta, it's like the man spent the majority of his time developing games and looking at the game stuff like that, and not really spending too much time playing them, except for maybe Destiny or whatnot. But despite all that, he was a very average, casual type of guy, and he was looking out for the casual guy at the end of the day, right? Because the casuals are not just because it's like him, but because of the fact that. The majority of people are casuals, but do we really, did we really ever need uh, something to hold us by the hand? Uh, I mean, uh, seriously, like back in the day, I mean, seriously, like, did we, like before things, like before the Nintendo times, right? I'll take you back in the old days, right? Before there were home consoles. Did, or, or I'll take you back to the old consoles, right? Like, did we ever really need, like, I mean, sure, you could adjust the difficulty, you know, normal, hard, you know, easy, whatever. But other than that, like, did we really need to be held by the hand whenever we put in quarters to play Pac-Man or Galaga or a fighting game or anything like that? You know, or when we played against somebody else, you never knew if the person was better or not. But obviously, when you're playing better, uh, you're having a better time. But that doesn't mean you can't have a great time even when you lose. I mean, when I was a kid, if I liked the game, I would keep on playing it no matter what. And within time, I would get better. Um, would it be even better if I won? Sure. But at the same time, if I kept playing the game, which I did, I would end up winning more and more because I would learn how to play the game better. And that became even more satisfying, which made me play it even more. 
So did we really ever need to be held by the hand? No, no, it's, you know, the problem in this day and age is that they're, they're, they're doing our, you know, artificial, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, they're doing uh, artificial uh, dopamine, so to speak, right? They're, or artificial, you know, uh, success, so to speak, right? It doesn't feel, you know, it's, it's not earned. You know what I mean? Because the game is helping you. Kind of like the increase of aim assist, which is another reason why I'm against it. There's, you know, if somebody's better, they should end up on top. Simple as that. If they're more accurate, they should end up on top. So, and I'm a controller player. You know, I spent about six months, like during the Black Ops Cold War era, I spent about six months or so just playing mouse and keyboard. And I didn't just play Black Ops Cold War, but I played a whole bunch of other uh, shooters and such. And, uh, you know, I understand firsthand. I understand why the PC community complains as much as they do about the power of aim assist, especially when it comes to Call of Duty. Because with Call of Duty every single year since Modern Warfare 2019, or even before then, it's been increased. Um, you know, like uh, like there's um, kind of like those people that you saw playing Black Ops 2 and how they would miss their shots because they've been playing more recent CODs, which have much more powerful aim assist, and it's like, yep, I called it. These guys wouldn't be able to shoot straight for a while because they've been playing the new shit, which does more of a percentage of the work for you, which is something that I'm against. I mean, for me personally, when I'm doing the higher percentage of the work or all the work, guess what? I am. Uh, it's much more satisfying to get a kill. I particularly love that. That's one of the things that I love about X-Define. It's like, okay, even me, someone who's got a lot of experience with first-person shooters on console... Uh, even I have to put in some work in order to get good. That's one of the things that attracted me to Halo 5 and that Magnum gameplay. It's what attracted me to Halo Infinite with the battle battle rifle gameplay. Despite the fact that battle rifle is easy, there's the fact that how it works. You have to have consistency about it. You have to be good with the tracking. You have to follow the pattern of the way your opponent is strafing and you have to hit consistent headshots. So that, the combination of those things actually makes the weapon harder to use consistently, right? Maybe not hard to hit your target, but because the way Halo works in terms of the amount of times it takes to hit the target to put it down, as well as the importance of headshots and the fact that the time to kill is longer than more, most games, including the one you're seeing on your screen right now. The combination of those things is what attracted me to Halo because it, uh, it there is a skill gap there. And with games like X Defiant or classic Call of Duty games, yeah, there was a skill gap, believe it or not. But it was more easily accessible, which is what, why it got so popular in the first place. So, um, you know, and it was easily po uh, accessible because, you know, the time to kill was a lot shorter than Halo's. Uh, plus, you had the perk system, which gave the players options, and they really, really liked that. Uh, you know, it, it was, it, it felt very satisfying to play because even if you sucked at the game, you would still get your kills. For instance, let me tell you this, before we go on to Modern Warfare 3, or should I say Modern Warfare 2023, uh, before we go to that, let me tell you something, okay? And this is not me favoring one game over another. This is just fact, okay? If an average player were to, or, or an above average player, right? An average or above average player, if they were to get in a, in a match, you know, and in a, in a pro Call of Duty player was in their lobby, or even if they played one-on-one, -on -one, right? Let's just say they played one-on-one, -on -one, they would likely get maybe one kill at least one kill if not more on that call of duty pro because of how the uh how how it all works like with how um not just not necessarily just aim assist but like in terms of uh like how fast the time to kill is in comparison to like a game like halo right okay now if the same kind of scenario were to take place in halo you're not that player would be lucky to get one kill on that pro. And I mean lucky. Let me give you two scenarios. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen the, the, the video with Actman to where he, you know, challenged Lucid in a 1v1, you know, made a video of it. It was great. And then Lucid showed him a few things. So uh, Actman only got one kill and he was lucky to get that kill. He really had to work for it. I'm sure Lucid wasn't even trying all that much, you know. Uh, so, because that's how Halo works. Right. There's a there's a like the skill gap in that game is wider because of how the time to kill works, which the higher time to kill, the more skill is required. So therefore, the less aim assist there is in the game, the more skill is required. So um, that's what they've done. They made it skill less. Even in a casual game, you have to have skill. Another example is this. You guys are going to laugh at this. Right. And I saw this in a Halo Reach video once or some some pro posted or somebody posted it. So this is what happened, and you guys are going to, 
I still can't believe this. Well, I can believe it, but you know, anyway, this is what happened. A, f a team of four Halo pros entered a uh, uh, a Slayer, which is basically a team deathmatch, <clears throat> against four random players. And the four pro players, you know what they did? They grenaded themselves 49 times because 50 is the, sk is the kill limit, right? They naded themselves 49 times in a row. And then they started playing. They're like, okay, let's not die once. And you want to know what the results were? The results were that that pro team won. They, the, the other guys on the team could not get one kill. Not, not even one lucky kill to win that match. Not by grenades, not by power weapons, not by anything. If that was to happen in Call of Duty, I guarantee you that the pros would lose. Because, again, of how the time to kill works and stuff like that. Somebody would have gotten a lucky kill. That's how, how it is with Call of Duty. <clears throat> so, um, but of course to give, you know, I don't, I, again, like I said, I'm not taking sides. Uh, another great example, of course, is the whole, uh, you know, doom clan that went up against the four pro players and how the score in, in the hard point ended up being 250 to 12. <laughs> that also shows you right there. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it is what it is, man. It, it, it is what it is. So, um, so basically, what I, what I'm trying to tell you is that in terms of the way, you know, a, a game like Call of Duty is being developed compared to a game like X Defiant, you know, there, X Defiant is putting back in the fun and the the and they're also putting in the skill gap, of course, requiring skill, a certain amount of skill, of course, into the game, and they're doing it the classic way, right? The way it was done in its origin that you know, put games on the map in the first place and that made them successful in the first place, including Call of Duty. And what Call of Duty is doing is, you know what they're, you know what they're doing. I don't have to tell you what they're doing. You know, they're just, they're taking the skill factor out. They're bridging the skill gap and all the other stuff that they're doing, you know, and, and the, the developers have no choice but to do that part. And then I'm sure Activision probably says, yeah, then you guys can, you know, do whatever you want after that. As long as we have this, you can do whatever you want after that. But you know, that one thing that is required, that Activision requires, actually ruins the game. Especially in the long run. But at the same time, they somehow managed to make billions, at least according to them. I don't know if that's true or not. Because the thing is, before Microsoft bought them for $68.7 billion, uh, if, it was, if they tried to buy them beforehand, I think it would have been worth significantly more. So basically, that basically tells me that Activision is probably not making as much money as they used to 10 years ago, or even, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, but anyway, let's talk about Modern Warfare 3, right? So with Modern Warfare 3, one of the biggest problems with that game, it, well, first of all, let me acknowledge that Modern Warfare 3, in terms of its core, its foundation, it um it is a better it is definitely a game that seems a, a a significant improvement over modern warfare 2022 maybe a significant improvement improvement over vanguard cold war and all that i don't know about cold war i'm not sure i mean cold war could have definitely done a whole bunch of things better but i don't know a lot of people say that you know even that like since modern warfare 2019 or even before since before modern warfare 2019 a lot of the the talk on social media is that you know, this Call of Duty, Call of Duty 2023, or also known as Modern Warfare 3, is the best game since Black Ops 4. So, um, I, my eyes have seen a lot of footage. I've seen a lot of gameplay, a lot of footage and stuff like that. And uh, it really matters on your perspective on the game and your personal taste as well uh, on whether or not that's true. And if you believe that that is the case, then that's great. And if you enjoy the game, that's great. I'm happy for you. I want you to enjoy yourself. I want you to have fun. So, you know, everybody's got their different reasons for liking or disliking a game, you know, multiplayer and single player included, like any type of game out there you play, anything you like to eat, anything you like to do, any hobbies you might have. Everybody's got their own specific reasons as to why they like or dislike it. So if you dislike it, then, you know, uh, don't buy it. <laughs> Uh, and if you like it, then, you know, if, if it's going to make you happy, then then buy it. If it does it for you, then buy it. Um, but, 
But with Modern Warfare 3, uh, other than the cheating problem, which is a huge problem for the game, it's also got a really, really bad spawn system as well. But uh, a lot of people are asking and saying, like, how in the world, you know, can they mess up the spawn system? We've been doing this for so many years. How can we how can we get this so wrong? How can we go backwards in the spawn system? And the only answer that I can come up with is that, well, the problem is that you've got this EOMM algorithm and spawning has a lot to do with that. And how do I know this? Well, I don't remember the entire patent, you know, uh, in terms of all the details. I'm sure why so serious does. But in terms of all the details in patent, I'm pretty sure spawning had, had something to do with that, especially when you're talking about Black Ops Cold War. In Black Ops Cold, Cold War, specifically in Free For All, oh my gosh, the way that game would spawn would spawn me back in in the middle of a gunfight between two people or somewhere in the open and, and they the game would assure that the person saw me spawn and they were already aim, ADSing at me before I even knew that they were looking at me. It was like, oh my gosh. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's an algorithm. You know, the spawns are going to have a lot to do with that. See, and that's something that players cannot really control if the if there's an algorithm going on, right? You can't, if the spawn system is rigged, no matter what game mode you play, no matter how you try to control spawns and where your enemy spawns or how you would spawn, well, if the algorithm is fucked up, then there's nothing you could do. Once you die, you're in the mercy of the game and it's going to spawn you wherever it wants. So if the game determines you're playing too well, it's going to spawn you in the worst place possible or in a place that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever and you're going to pay the price. That is the one of, that is by far one of the best ways to literally nerf good players is to not give them any controls over spawns because one of the things good players have always been able to do was manipulate spawns and I'm going to take another sip of my water here for a second cheers players were always able to manipulate spawns good players they knew how the system worked and they knew how to manipulate them and obviously some went above and beyond that and basically just spawn trap people so that was something as well but uh as far as non-spawn trapping is is concerned good players have uh i mean Good players have always have a really good general idea. I mean, if the spawn system is, is you know, if it makes sense and if it's a good system, good players are always going to have a good general idea of where the bad guys will be coming from. Whether you're playing Domination, whether you're playing Team Deathmatch, whether you're playing Free For All. In Domination, it's a lot easier because it's, it's objective-based as well and objectives influence where people would spawn from, the flags would. But uh, in terms of uh, team deathmatch, free for all, whatnot, it's a little bit harder. But even then, good players will know generally where, where the enemies are going to be coming from. And for me personally, that's actually what made me into a good player. Once I realized how the spawn system worked, like back in Black Ops 2, my KD and my uh, score per minute increased double, like it double, literally. And I was able to keep players in front of me instead of getting shot from the back or behind or whatnot because I knew how it worked. And then that game, the game became even more addictive. And I'm like, okay, this is how it works. This is how this player is able to do this. Okay, so they're not just lucky and I'm not just stupid. It's like, okay, I just didn't know that there was a system. I thought it was all random. And I was completely wrong all those years. You know, I just didn't know any better. So again, knowledge is one of the things that separates a good player from a bad player. Knowledge is part of it. And then skill is the other part. Right. And combining those two things together is what makes you a successful player. And they are taking as much out of that in a lot of these games as possible, like with Call of Duty and, 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 and stuff like that, which is, again, another reason why I admire X Defiant is because they're reinjecting it into a, a genre that was that is still thought to be dead. And only time will tell whether or not it really is. We will see. But um, personally, I would say that uh with with modern warfare 3 you know with the spawn system problems and the cheating and all that stuff i mean i don't know man all i know is that like hopefully microsoft does something about this one of the questions that i've been asking recently is like okay obviously activision sent cease and desist the guys like sm squared who weren't really who weren't going to make a penny out of what they were making right uh 
but uh, for you know people who develop cheats or whatnot, or these companies that develop cheats or whatnot, obviously they're not free as far as I understand, right? You pay like you know a cheap price or whatnot, and then you get such and such. So it's like, how come these guys are not getting ceased and desists? You know, makes you think a little bit. Um, I don't know. Maybe with Microsoft that might change. You know, because the thing is, Microsoft's got deep pockets, and obviously they flexed they flexed those deep pockets by acquiring Activision Blizzard. So, and they've got even more where that came from. So you know, they can certainly afford to you know, hire lawyers or anything like that in order to combat this thing if it's costing them their business because they're going to want a return on investment. But here is the problem. Part of the problem is that a lot of these people that are, you know, buying these cheats and that are cheating uh, and hacking and all that, well, the problem is that they actually enjoy that, you know, and at the same time, I'm sure there's a percentage of those guys that buy the cheats so that way they don't feel like they're at a disadvantage. And if you if you go back in time, like back in the day, nobody had scuff controllers. Not many people had them. And then once they became popular, more and more people got them because they didn't feel like being at a disadvantage. Same thing goes with headsets. Things same thing goes with things like uh, control freaks or whatever it is, you know, and all these different things now that are cheating, you know. And some people would argue that back in the day, you know, using uh, using a controller like a scuff or an elite controller or you know a be a battle beaver or whatever. A lot, back in the day, a lot of people considered that cheating because it wasn't on an even playing ground. You would buy to give yourself an advantage. I mean, granted, you know, it wouldn't make you aim better or anything like that, but you could jump shot a hell of a lot easier. You were able to stay on target. I mean, you basically had to play claw. If there were no controller settings that would allow you like a stick and move, which there always wasn't uh, up until a certain point. Uh, I remember stick and move wasn't even a thing in Call of Duty up until uh, 2015 with Black Ops 3, believe it or not. Stick and move did not exist in Advanced Warfare. So, uh, you know, people who had elite controllers had an advantage, right? And plus you got the trigger stops and all that stuff. So it's like you're literally paying for an advantage that you wouldn't have otherwise. You know, it's kind of like almost like the equivalent of taking steroids, if you think about it, but in video game form. So I can certainly understand where that came from. Um, I, I no longer use an elite controller or a battle beaver or anything like that, especially because they've set, they've allowed you to do so many more things on a regular controller now than they've done before. So, and I do admit that I did, uh, my, I was going to get a scuff and then, uh, I ended up just getting an elite controller and the elite controller helped a lot specifically with the jump shotting and the advanced movement games. And I played with an elite controller for like two or three years. And then after that, once games just started doing stick and move and all that kind of stuff, it's like, I really don't need it. I basically said to myself, I really don't need it. There's always going to be certain weapons that I'm not going to use. An elite controller is just, you know, it's nice to have, but at the same time, it's like, nah, don't need it and i just didn't get it anymore and at the same time i did originally have that mentality of it's kind of like cheating to a certain degree it's like one could argue that it is and at the same time another side can argue that it isn't but when you think about it it's an advantage so therefore it's a, if it's an advantage you can buy isn't it kind of cheating kind of like steroids it's an advantage you can buy but <laughs> you see what i'm saying so again an argument can be made both ways so uh, but nowadays, thankfully, they've they've got all sorts of different controller settings you can do. You can, with a lot of the games out there today, you can kind of map uh, the controller settings how you want them in order to appease your comforts. And you can do stick and move, bumper jumper, and all that kind of stuff and different variations of that, which is perfectly fine. Um, but at the same time, I will say this, though. Uh, getting an elite controller or stuff like that will make things easier in terms of drop shotting or, you know, uh, shooting certain guns a little bit faster or whatnot or, you know, having a you know a split second step up in the in the ADS department because there's less motion on the triggers or whatnot but uh but it's not going to like instantly make you a better player I can assure you of that because of my uh it still requires some work you're gonna have to get used to it you know but once you know once you do then okay then you'll get the results but at the same time uh it's not like instant skill you know it's not like you're instantly you know there's there's new muscle memory that has to be built you know but uh if you're consistent enough it won't take long be honest but um but yeah um there's that as well so uh and, and on top of that you got to remember in order for a call of duty game to truly be good it's like you got the you know you got the maps which have been tampered with they're not the original modern warfare 2 maps because they've they got more lines of sight and doors and stuff like that which they really just didn't need but whatever um which makes the maps worse in my opinion 
uh, and therefore the, the flow of the game would be worse. And it would be more tactical instead of arcadey. So it's like they're giving you all these movements, but at the same time, they're changing the design of the maps that are that kind of like encourage people to like not move. <laughs> mm. So, and to top it all off, one of the three pillars, you know, the maps are one of the pillars that make Call of Duty successful. The weapons are another one. And I think the fact that you can actually change like a pistol into a submachine gun or something like that, I think that's a pretty cool concept. Um, and it gives more variety to weapons and hopefully good weapons. But, uh, um, uh, but another pillar that's very important is, let's see, we've already discussed maps. Another pillar that's very important is the weapons, of course, which we just discussed. And of course, the next pillar is the streaks, especially with Call of Duty. Um, there hasn't been uh, any mention of specialists. <clears throat> But we'll see. Maybe it might be something that they're kind of hiding for release. You never know. Uh, but um, the streaks themselves, like if the map design is too closed or too defensive or whatnot, those streaks are not going to be nearly as as good. And in Call of Duty, streaks need to be good because therefore, you know, being rewarded for playing well or going on a streak is part of what made Call of Duty in the first place. It's it's what separated it from everything else because back in the day you didn't really get rewarded for getting streaks right so call of duty started rewarding people for going on streaks and it's what gave the game its personality it's what separated it from everybody else and and that's why other people started doing that other people started um putting streaks into their games in some way shape or form to reward players and then they start adding a progression system, which was what Call of Duty did in the first place, and then maybe uh, their own versions of perks and all that kind of stuff. So you see where I'm going with this? So um, so yeah, man, I mean, the streaks kind of seem a little lackluster, that's for sure, from what I've seen. I mean, granted, we haven't seen them all, but you get the point. Um, and the maps have to, see, that's the thing, the maps have to support the movement, you know, the, the maps have to support the streaks and, and the creative class system, the pacing of the game. Uh, it all has to kind of fit together nicely, but they're trying to do a little bit of everything in one game, which on paper sounds good, but in execution, it sucks. You know, there has to be a certain level of consistency across all the different, uh, all the different things that you put into the game. So that's part of the problem with Modern Warfare 3, in my opinion. But at the same time, Sledgehammer Games is basically doing what they did in Vanguard. You guys remember Modern Warfare 2019? What did they do in Modern Warfare 2019? They took things away like uh, like Dead Silence and all that kind of stuff. What did Vanguard do? They put it back in the game. You know, they 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 kept a lot of what Modern Warfare 2019 did, but they put it back in the game. You know, maybe they eased up a tad bit on some of the safe spaces and stuff like that, but at the same time, there were plenty of those as well. Um, I'm surprised combat pacing is not back in the game. I think combat pacing would be, uh, I don't know, maybe combat pacing just doesn't belong in this game from what I've seen. But at the same time, I don't think many p people would care either. I mean, can you imagine playing, oh, I don't know, like High Rise, like a 12 on 12? I think that'd be pretty cool, possibly. You know, and I think a lot of players would utilize the maps, different areas of the map a lot more. Um, and, and plus it took away from the whole 6v6 problem. You know, some people, like the streamer that I mentioned that I didn't name, um, some people will say that, you know, 6v6 is no longer a thing anymore. So it's like combat pace pacing was kind of a, um kind of a remedy for that if you think about it so um because usually sledgehammer games always comes up with something interesting like uh in uh in advanced warfare sledgehammer games did the whole they did the jetpacks they were the first ones to do jetpacks and of course they did the whole score streak module thing customizable score streaks genius if you ask me in world war ii they did headquarters and then they put their own spin on a create a class system. And uh, in Vanguard, it was combat pacing. So in this game, I don't know. I think it's I think in this game, they're they're it's the whole weapon thing, like in terms of turning a pistol into a submachine gun. I think that that's what their thing is going to be for this game, probably. And that's my guess. But at the same time, the game hasn't been released yet. Uh, but no, I am not 
planning on playing it. There's even if X Defined doesn't get released this year, there's still Halo. And at the same time, even when X Defined does get released, um, I always have this thing of just, you know, falling in love with Halo and just playing Halo whenever I feel like it, especially if the meta is good. And we'll see if the meta is going to be good now that they're going to change it in ranked. But um, but but I really do hope that X Defiant is good. I really do. I, I I want nothing but best for the game. And to top it all off, I want the game to actually completely like survive and thrive and prove to the entire industry and to the entire community that yeah, you can do things the old fashioned way and you can do right by the players. And you don't need this algorithm in there and to hold players by the hand and you can still be financially successful and commercially uh, successful and all that. I mean, if we never really needed it back in the day, if Call of Duty was still making billions of dollars before this whole algorithm thing and before the microtransactions, then guess what? Um, you know, so therefore we really don't need it. You know, you want to give people cosmetic, cosmetic stuff in the store? No problem. You know, give people as many cosmetics as you want. You know, especially with all the different types of Ubisoft franchises that are going to be under X Defiant. You can go all sorts of ways with it. Um, you know, fine, whatever, you know, have people buy it, you know, put on special discounts and stuff like that or whatever. But, uh, but to have an algorithm in the game in order to increase a, a bad player's play time to increase their chances of getting something from the store is, ah, you know, uh, it's, you know, part of me thinks that it's kind of ridiculous, you know, especially since you really don't see too much of it when you're playing it. You know, a lot of people are buying all these different things so other people can see them. <coughs> if it was a third person shooter, okay, I get it, you know, but first person shooter, the only thing that I care about first person shooter cosmetics is the guns. That's it. That's where camos come in or weapon variants that don't change the stats of your gun. If anything, they can just change the cosmetic look and make the iron sights better then that's it. So, which is another thing that Call of Duty World War II did right, by the way. Um, so, yeah, but uh, all in all for Modern Warfare 3, again, um, an improvement probably over Modern Warfare 2022, but the two things that are the biggest uh, poisons for that game, in my opinion, are the combinations of the fact that cheaters are being allowed to be running rampant and all that kind of stuff, and there's nothing really being done about it so far. And, of course, the SBMM forward slash EOMM, you know, those... Those two things right there are the one, two knockout punch that uh, are uh, that 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 are basically not good for Modern Warfare Three. And how many how many knockout punches can the game endure? You know, and are those guys really making that much money in microtransactions? I don't know. So I, I think even Eight Thoughts himself said that uh, that he believes that those numbers are are rigged and they're not they're not right. Um, when you consider how many people play the multiplayer, but at the same time, a shit ton of people play Warzone, but they've also lost out a lot of Warzone players, but they might regain them back because it's a new Call of Duty, blah, blah, blah. We'll see. I don't know. But um, you guys get the deal. So at the end of the day, those were my thoughts on Modern Warfare 3. Those are my thoughts on uh, Halo World Championships, the state of gaming, all that kind of stuff. I don't even know what the hell I'm going to title this thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed recording it. My voice is out. I've pretty much run out of water. I've talked too much. So, um, and I got to go to bed here pretty soon. So, matter of fact, now. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I want to know down in the comment section first of all. Uh, I wonder who is who managed to make it all the way through. And if you did, let me know down in the comment section below. I. Um, I hope this was as smooth as possible, and if my voice sounds funny, it's because my throat is completely dry, and I've been talking for a while, and it's been a while since I talked like this, and it was only like two and a half weeks ago when I recovered from COVID or when I still had COVID, so please forgive me, and uh, and yeah, so plus I got bad sinuses this year, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, those are pretty much my thoughts on the whole thing, so to speak, so um, yeah, love to hear yours down below, and um, and yeah, here's hoping X Defiant releases this year. And if it doesn't, there's quarter four, uh, excuse me, quarter one of 2024. And of course, you know, guys, it, it, even for those of you guys that may not be into Halo, 
give Halo a shot. Give Halo Infinite a shot. It's completely free to play. And it's obviously on Xbox and on PC. So, um, and you can even find it on Steam too. So, uh, you don't have to have Game Pass, you know, for the multiplayer. So, um, so yeah, if, uh, if you ever want to give it a shot, just give it a shot. You might find that you're having a lot of fun with it. So, especially with what they're about to implement in season five, which comes out in less than two days. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, uh, I hope this made for a good conversation and uh, yeah, thank you all very much for taking the time to watch and or listen, whether you made it all the way through or not. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.